Hi Foldscope community. My name is Holly Stewart and I'm the Education Specialist for Foldscope Instruments. This video is part of a series of videos to offer you some tips, tricks, and strategies on using your Foldscope 2.0. Sample preparation is an important part of microscopy and the right lighting technique can really bring your samples to life when they're viewed underneath your Foldscope. This video will help you understand and learn a little bit more about how to use your LED light module. This is the Foldscope 2.0 LED light module. The power switch is this toggle switch that's on the very bottom, and it will let you click three times. So I'm gonna turn it around so you can see what happens. When you click it one time, this light comes on. When you click it two times, the light gets a little bit brighter. And when you click it a third time, you'll see that the bottom LED light turns on. We'll talk about when to use each of these different lights in just a second. The other thing I want you to take notice of on the back of your LED light module are the two rectangles that are on either side of the lights. You'll notice that one rectangle is thicker than the other. If you look at the back of your Foldscope 2.0, you'll notice that there's a similar set of rectangles with one being thicker than the other. This is to help you line up your LED light module with your Foldscope. So when you click them, when you put them together so that the thick rectangle matches the thick and the thin rectangle matches the thin, it magnetically attracts and now you have your LED light module on your Foldscope. So let's talk about when to use these different lights. The first setting, or the second setting, is for what's called bright field lighting. Okay, This is for when you have a transparent or a translucent specimen that you're trying to look at. The light will be able to pass directly through the sample and to your eye. So you turn on your setting to either the dimmer or the brighter of the two. Depending on your sample, some might, might uh, look better with those, one of those two different settings. You play around with it and you figure out which works best for your samples. So you turn on your LED light, attach it to your fold scope, and I did take off the lens so that you can see a little bit easier the light passing through. So you can see that the light would be able to pass directly through your sample. This produces a white or a bright background and compared to a darker specimen. So the sample that you're looking at will actually block some of the light and look darker compared to the background. So this is why it's called bright field because the field in the background is bright. Some objects though that are transparent and clear or colorless don't really work very well with a bright field setting because if you're looking at something that's clear against a white background, you're not really gonna be able to tell what's there. So what you use is something that is called dark field lighting. Dark field lighting does that kind of what it sounds like. It produces a background that's dark compared to your sample. In order to get a dark background, you're just going to take your, your LED light and you're going to just shift it to the side. Now you will have to hold it in place while you're looking at your sample because the magnet's gonna to wanna to pull it back. But I'll show you what it looks like from the front. So if I just shift it to the side, you'll see that the light now is not coming at it straight, it's coming at it from an angle. So your specimen, depending on what you have, the, there are some specimens that will look like they're glowing compared to that dark background. Again, play around with the different lighting techniques and see what works best for the specimen that you have. The last setting is this bottom one here, and this is the one that is really exciting for the Foldscope 2.0. This is for what is called reflective lighting. So again, bright field and dark field are for objects that are transparent or translucent, but there are some objects that are opaque, which means that light can't pass through them. So if you have an opaque object, but you still wanna see what it looks like underneath the microscope, now you can. So what you're going to do for this, in order to make this work, you're going to set the light for the reflective lighting, you're gonna turn that one on, and then you'll notice that there's a little slide here that's on top of the bright field light. And you're gonna move that slide all the way down. So I'm gonna push mine so that it's all the way down so you can see I just slid it down there. And this is so that you can line this light up with this hole that's at the back of your fold scope. 
So when you have it set like this and you click it on, again with the thick rectangle matching the thick and the thin matching the thin, let me line it up and then I will show you from the front. You can see that that light is now going through that hole. It's not going through the sample, it's going to be going through the hole. So when I show you from the front, you can see where the light is shining, but you'll notice that nothing is coming through that sample. Because what's happening is when you put that lens on there, the light will come up and bounce and then hit your sample from the top. This is called reflective lighting. When light bounces, it's reflective. So it will hit the, the sample from the top and allow you to see some of the features of opaque objects that you'd not been able to see before. So this is an exciting new way to use your fold scope. And hopefully now you have a little bit better of an understanding on how to use your LED light module. And I want you to go and have fun exploring with your fold scope and using these different lighting techniques.